and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. There are a lot of whiners in the Bible, aren't there? There are just a lot of whiners in the Bible. When uh, we were out in Colorado this summer, we were in this, this gift shop, and they, and, uh, they had uh, a, a wine stopper, you know, one of those things you put in the top of your bottle, you know, for if you cork your, take the cork out of your wine, you want to save the rest for later. And I looked at the, at the uh, um, uh, clerk and I said, man, I wish these worked on some of the people I know. So <laughs> stop that whining. When I was uh, in, uh, graduated from high school, the, the five summers right after high school, I worked for the local rural electric co-op. And uh, my job each summer was, um, I worked on what's called the spray crew. And uh, our, it was our job to go out and, and spray uh, toxic chemicals on trees and kill them. Actually, they were underneath the power lines so that they didn't grow up and knock down the power lines and do all of that kind of stuff. So we only, and, and actually, we were really, really proud because one of the things that, that a lot of farmers complain about is that when the, the spray crew comes through, that, that so often the spray drifts onto farmers' crops and kills their crops. We never had one complaint the whole five summers I worked there because we made very, very sure that the wind was not blowing in the wrong direction because we didn't want to damage any, any of the, the um, foliage or crops or anything that was, uh, that, that was supposed to be growing. Well, my first year I started out, uh, and I started out at $5 an hour. And now you need to realize that this was about a dollar and a half an hour better than any other job you could get in town as a summer job for, for a college student or for somebody right out of high school. And, uh, you know, I thought that was great. But then I found out that the other guy on the crew was making five twenty-five an hour. And so I asked about that. And they said, well, you know, he, he, he's a year older than you. He's got a year of experience. He worked here last summer, so this is your first year. With his experience, he gets an extra 25 cents an hour. And I figured, that's fair. That made sense to me. And so the next year, I came back for year two, and so now I was making 525, and he was making 550, which is okay. I mean, that was fair. He was, he was a year older, a year farther in college, and all of that. Well, the third year came around, and he wasn't working there anymore. Um, but I was there back for my third year, and one of my high school classmates was now uh, working on, on the spray crew with me. You know what I found out? I mean, I, I got my quarter raise like I was expecting, so I was making five fifty an hour. You know what? They were paying Jim five fifty an hour too. What? I think I need that that wine stopper, don't I? Yeah. I just thought that was so unfair. Oh. But you know what? It really wasn't because we were doing the same job, doing the same work, and we should get the same pay. But I was miffed for a while. I, I really was, because I, you know, I had, I had uh, put in my time, and I had uh, put in two years of experience, and I was, you know, moving up the scale, and I thought, well, you know, he should be, he should be back down there, too, you know, have to pay his dues. Jesus gives us this very odd parable today. This parable of the landowner. Actually, it's really not about the landowner. This really has nothing to do with the landowner. It has to do with the workers. It has to do with the workers. They're comparing themselves. They're setting up this hierarchy among themselves. You know, who's the best worker? Who does the most work? Who puts in the, the most time? Who, who puts in the most energy? And all of that kind of things. And so, so among the workers in, in the vineyard, they're, they're kind of jockeying for some kind of position. 
And of course, the, in the parable, the landowner is hiring workers for the vineyard because the landowner needs workers for the vineyard. So he goes out at 6 o'clock in the morning and hires those who are standing around. Then 9, and then noon, and 3, and finally 5 o'clock. And so when 6 o'clock rolls around and they're done with their 12-hour shift working in the, in the vineyard, they come in and it's time to get paid, time to get their daily wage. What's with this landowner? If he had just paid the people who were there first in the morning so that they get their daily wage and they walk off and they won't see that the people who, who work less got paid the same amount, everything would have been fine, right? You know, we would have avoided this conflict. I mean, that, that's what I would do. I would have just pretended that I was paying the rest less. But the point of this parable is not, is not the, that the people have worked and earned and deserve, but that the landowner has called them, has invited them into his presence, in, into uh, his company, into the work that he has to do in the world, into the vineyard. And so at the end, when, when he chooses to pay the, the, those who are hired last uh, and, and chooses to pay them the same amount as those who are hired first, of course there's going to be grumbling. Just like there always is. I mean, how many of you have, have experienced that at your, at your place of work? You know, you get, you get around the... Uh, um, you get around the, the water cooler or the coffee thing, and, and what's the first thing that happens? Oh, did you see how she's not working her day today? She's not doing her job. And, or, man, did you see that guy? Oh, he's slacking off. Yeah. Um, I, I realized something the other day. You know where the word scuttlebutt comes from? <laughs> it's the water cooler on a ship. Yeah, so that's where scuttlebutt comes. It's the gossip. It's, it's that kind of stuff. And so that's our human nature. It's our human nature. We want to determine who is deserving of what. We want to be the, the, the people who determine what you get and what I get. And of course, as, as Jesus gives us this example, I am always more deserving than anybody else. That is, just, that is just our human nature. Because I see how hard I've worked, how much time I've put in, and all of this, and I see it as monumental. That, that I'm, you know, God's gift to the vineyard because I have done such great work. And of course, I deserve not just what I agreed upon for, for a daily wage, but... I should get a bonus because God is so blessed to have me on God's team. Yeah. And so Jesus is pointing out our human nature in this parable. Jesus is pointing out this fact that that we have this tendency and we have this desire always to try and, and figure out who should get the place of honor and, and who is the one that, that deserves more and who deserves less. I mean, the disciples have been doing that, you know, all through the Gospel of Matthew. Um, James and John come up and, and they say, Lord, you know, we want you to give us the places of honor to sit at your right and your left. Um, they ask the question, you know, who, who, which one of us will be the greatest in the kingdom? Um, Peter asks, asks the question, you know, you know, when Jesus is talking about uh, giving up everything and following him, Peter says, well, look, we gave up everything, I gave up everything and, and followed you. So, of course, he's thinking... He somehow deserves 
greatness in the kingdom of heaven. But the reality is, over and over and over again, we are a part of the kingdom of heaven, not because we have worked or earned or deserved it, but because of the generosity of our God. We are invited into the kingdom of heaven, not because we are so great, but because God is so great. Because God is amazing. And it, it, it's, I love this story from Jonah. Jonah is such a whiner, and, and I, I especially love Jonah's indictment of God. When Jonah is so angry with God, what is, what is the worst thing Jonah can accuse God of? Well, I knew that you were gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from causing the destruction of Nineveh. Hey, if you want to accuse me of anything, please accuse me of being gracious and merciful. I will take it as a badge of honor. Please accuse me of being slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. If that's the worst indictment that we can have of our God, thanks be to God for God's generosity and for God's amazing love. We have been invited to be a part of the kingdom of God. We have our, the doors to the kingdom of God have been thrown open through the blood of Christ on the cross. And we don't deserve it. We don't deserve a minute of it. It is our place and, and our right and, and everything for us to constantly be grateful, be grateful to God for making us a part of God's kingdom, for inviting us in to be workers in the vineyard. Amen.